Hey there, this is MathCamp321 presenting a lesson on solving rational inequalities. So in this lesson I'm going to teach you how to solve rational inequalities and we're going to follow a three-step procedure to do this. And that procedure is outlined in the box in the middle of the slide. So let's go over that before we uh, dive into any problems here. Part A, state any excluded value or values. Step B, solve the related equation. Step C, place the values from parts A and B on a number line and use interval testing. You may use the calculator to assist in the interval testing. That's for the uh, students in my class, of course, but maybe your teacher wants you to do those tests manually. So let's look at number seven. Uh, number seven, we have a rational inequality, and in part A, we're supposed to state the excluded values. So I'm going to put part A right here. And the values that I'm going to exclude are going to be what's going to make the denominator 0. So if I look at my denominators right here, I've got a denominator of 4a and of 8a and of 2. And I think the, the value that I need to exclude would be 0. Because if a were 0, then you'd have a problem. So I'm going to say that a cannot equal 0. Okay, part B says to solve the related equation. So what I'm going to do is take the rational inequality and just rewrite it with an equal sign. So let's make it very clear that all I did in this step was take away the inequality symbol and I put an equal sign in its place. Now, to solve a rational equation, you could either look at a, pr a previous uh, lesson that I put online or we can just establish the LCD and rewrite each of these three fractions with that LCD. Well, in this case, the LCD is going to be 8a. So I'm going to go ahead and set up the three fractions with that LCD of 8a. Now I'm going to cycle through each of those three fractions and ask myself, what am I, what am I going to need to introduce to get to that LCD? Well, to get a 4a to look like an 8a, I'm going to have to introduce a 2. And 1 times 2 is 2. Moving to the second fraction. To get an 8a to look like an 8a, I don't have to do a thing. So I'm just going to leave the numerator of 5 alone. And now when I look to the last fraction, or the last denominator, I have a 2. Which means I'm going to need to have to introduce a 4a to get that desired 8a. So I have to multiply the top by 4a. And that leaves me with a numerator of 4a. Now once we've rewritten all of our fractions with the same denominator, I cancel out the denominator, and I solve the resulting equation in just the numerator. So that's going to be 2 plus 5, or 7, equals 4a. And that means that a is equal to 7 fourths. Now the next thing that I'm supposed to do is take these two answers from parts A and B and put them on a number line. So I'm going to create a number line, and I'm going to put 0 here, and I'm going to put 7 fourths, which is 1 and 3 fourths over here. Now I know that A cannot equal 0, so I've got to make the decision whether to make these boundary points open or closed circles. I'm going to make this one an open circle because A can never equal 0. <clears throat> and it says that right here. Now to determine this 7 fourths, whether it's open or closed, I go back to the original problem. And the original inequality does not have an equal sign. So this is also going to be open. Now, placing these two boundaries on a number line creates three regions. The region all the way to the left, the region in the middle, and the region to the right. And what I want to do is I want to pick test values in each of those regions to see if the inequality holds true or false. So let's go over here. Uh, maybe I'll switch to another color. And I'm going to test something in the left region. So I want to pick a number that's less than 0. So I'm going to use, I don't know, uh, maybe negative um, 1 half. <clears throat> and that might seem like a weird choice, but I'm just looking about plugging it in here, and I want to pick something that's going to be a nice value to plug in. So I'm going to use negative a half, 
And I, I allow my students to use the calculator for this step anyway, so who cares really what it is. Um, in the middle region here, I think I'm going to pick positive one half. And that T stands for test, by the way. That's my test point. And I think uh, over to the rightmost region, I'm going to put in, I don't know, if this is one and three quarters, maybe I'll just put in uh, four. Okay, so I'm going to enter this in on the calculator now. We're going to use that to do the test. So I'm queuing up the calculator. I'm going to let y sub 1 equal the left-hand side. So that's going to be 1 divided by the quantity 4a, or 4x in this case, plus 5 over 8x. And I want to know when this is going to be greater than one half or 0.5 greater than so I'm going to go to the table which is second graph and I'm going to uh, right now there's a bunch of things already entered in on my table so I'm going to show you how to create a table of your own choosing by going to second window which is your table setup and I'm going to set the independent variable to ask that allows you to construct tables of your choosing I'm going to go back to the table by pressing second graph and now the table's blank and I can put in whatever I want and the first thing that I want to put in is negative a half or negative 0.5 okay so when I put that in I get negative 1.75 compared with 0.5 and I'm trying to see whether the left hand side or y sub 1 is greater than y sub 2 well in this case is negative 1.75 greater than 0.5? The answer is no, so that test fails. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna put a little X here to say, hey, this test did not work. Now I'm gonna call the calculator back up and I'm gonna try the next test value, which is positive a half. When I plug that in, I get 1.75 is greater than 0.5. Well, that's true. That is greater than 0.5. So I'm going to go back to the slide over here. I'm going to put a little check for the middle region. The middle region works. But I've got to test this final region by plugging in a 4. And if I plug in 4, I get 0.218 is greater than 0.5. And that's not true. So I'm going to put another X over here and say, OK, that region failed. So the only region that worked was the region in the middle. So using interval notation, the winning region for this inequality are going to be those values between 0 and 7 fourths. Great. So that's the answer to problem number 7. We have one more sample problem to go, and I think it's going to go a lot quicker now that we've gone through the process and we kind of have an idea of what we're doing. So part A for number 8 would be to state the excluded values. So I'm going to write A over here. And once again, I'm looking at my denominators, and the variable that I have is x, and I, and I think that x should never be 0. If x is 0, we're going to have a problem, so I'm going to say that x cannot be 0. Now, in part b, I'm supposed to solve the related equation. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite the problem, given number 8, but as an, uh, as an equation instead of an inequality. Now I'm going to determine the LCD, which is 9x, and I'm going to set up to rewrite each of these uh, fractions with that LCD of 9x. Now I'm going to ask myself what I will need to introduce to get the old fraction to look like the new fraction. So the fraction on the left, I have a 3x, and I'm going to have to multiply by 3, which leaves me with a 3 in the numerator. The middle fraction has a denominator of 9x, so I'm already good to go there, so I'm going to leave the numerator 2 alone. And when I go to the last denominator, I've got a 3, but it needs to look like a 9x, so I've got to introduce a 3x. And that leaves me with a numerator of 6x. Now I'm going to cancel out the denominators, and I'm going to solve the resulting equation in the numerators, which would be 3 plus 2, or 5 equals 6x. I'll divide both sides by uh, 6, and I'll get that x is equal to 5 6. 
Okay, now we're at the point where we're going to make our number line. And our two critical values are 0 and 5, 6. Now I've got to decide whether to make open or closed circles. Well, since x can never equal 0, that's going to be open. And because the original inequality does not have an equal sign in it, that's also going to be open. Now I'm going to decide on my test values for each of the three regions on the left, in the middle, and in the right. I think I'll pick uh, negative one-third. I'll pick over here positive one-third. And over here I'll pick two. Now I'm going to get the calculator out to do the test. Okay. So I'm going to put in for y1, 1 over 3x plus 2 over 9x. Don't forget to offset the denominator with parentheses, because it's a little chunk that you're dividing by. And y sub 2 is going to be 2 thirds. I'm going to go to my table setup and switch it over to ask, so I can create a table of my choosing. And the first thing I'm going to plug in is negative one-third. And I want to know in this case, is y sub 1, or the left-hand side of the inequality, less than y sub 2? Well, in this case, negative 1.667 is less than 0.6 repeating. So that works. That is a winning region. Now let's go to the middle and we'll plug in one-third. Is 1.6 repeating, is that less than 0.6 repeating? The answer to that is no. So this is a failing region. And finally, we'll plug in 2. Is 0.27 repeating, is that less than 0.6 repeating? And the answer to that is yes. So that's another winning region. So now the winning regions are on the outsides. So I think I'll describe the solution region here in black. And the solution region is going to be from negative infinity to zero, union five, six to infinity. And just to be clear, this is the answer to number eight. And this was the answer to number seven. So I hope this video helped you understand how to solve rational inequalities following this very simple three-step process.